Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now, Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragon's Den, and one of the hosts of Between Taramina's on OAN TV. Um, we got some very interesting um, scenarios happening after what happened um, last week. I mean, like, um, of course, we did our podcast live from Lake Orion High School last week. Um, also, you can you can catch that on the Orion on TV local voice, and also um, other informational stuff going on around here. Um, I report some sad news going around the um, OAA, of course, happening over at North Farmington and at Pontiac. Um, and North Farmington, of course, um, they've been dealing with the loss of Kyle um, Kyle Penny, who um, passed away in his sleep. He was a um, three star athlete, played football, basketball, and um, baseball. Haven't heard anything from North Farmington what they're going to do this season. They're going to honor him if for um, something that, um, you know, if they're going to honor his memory, you know what I mean? It's going to be a very interesting season over there at North Farmington, especially because especially they played boys basketball and also got what Todd Negotian is going to do this year over there with um, that loss. And also another loss um, is in the Pontiac community, of course. Um, Pontiac football coach John Floyd suddenly passed away at 39. Um Died of a brain aneurysm. Um, he led his Phoenix to a one and seven season um, in the um, and um, one and six in the blue. Um, it was an unfortunate situation. Over, I mean, it was a tough situation. Um, Lloyd's been known for his inner city um, work with this with kids. Of course, Pontiac is a team that's had um, its up and downs. It's up and shares with them. What's going on over there? Um, we've had some issues. Over there, I mean, like, especially when it comes to financial crisis over there and the uncertainty of the situation over there. Lloyd, of course, was the, um, Pontiac's now going to be looking for his third coach in four years. And that's a, that's a tough situation for a football program when you look at what's going on over there, Pontiac, because, you know, they're struggling. They've had a lot of inner city kids. Um, when you look at, and then you have a lot of those kids leaving, you know, I mean, like, I noticed Pontiac Middle School, of course. They've been a track power. They're a successful track power, but you know when it comes to a dual meet, they're gonna have problems. When they go into the county meet, they they could win it. You know what I mean? Like with the success that they've had over there, um, of course. Um, but you know with the uncertainty, economic situation over there, Pontiac, it's very tough to have those kids go over there. And it's um, and it's also hard on a football team, especially when you look at the situation going around over there in Pontiac like that. And um, it's a tough situation when you look at that situation over there. I mean, but prayers to both families, of course. The Pennies of North Farmington also, um, they I know they did a rock over there dedicated to Mr. Penny. And um, also hearts and prayers are also to John Lloyd and his family for um, what he has, um, you know, for um, unfortunate for their unfortunate and sad loss to um, each of those two um, participants. Now we're going to go to other sports here. Um, of course, um... When you look at, um, of course, open girls basketball tryouts opened up today. And that means, you know, a couple more weeks and then starts girls basketball season. The first games are December the 4th. Um, when you look at early season projections, you know, we're not going to do an early season projection list, but um, but we'll give you a good idea how the league's going to work. I mean, like it's a 4-6 format, basically, in which you have 16s. In four divisions, you have red, white, blue, and gold. And um, you basically look at the teams surrounded there. You got red is your top top, top division, white's your second division, blue is your third division, and um, gold is your fourth division. And, you know, this is a very interesting scenario because they've had, I mean, like the last few years, they've had three eights. The OAA has had three eights. I mean, like, but um, this is a unique situation to have teams go four sixes. You know, it, it kind of balances things out. I mean, I've noticed that um, when I look at the early early stages of it, you know, you got the red and the white, I think, are equally balanced this year. Um, when you look at teams like um, like in the red, you got Stony Creek, Adams, Clarkston, um, Adams, Clark, North Farmington, Southfield, Lathrop, and um, Harrison in there, and North Farmington in there, though, that's a tough division when you look at it. I mean, you, mean you got some certainties. North Farmington's bringing in a new coach. Also, you got new coach at North Farmington and at Adams. 
of course, Adams, of course, you got Raven Owusu and Amber Jamison, who recently committed to Northwestern University this week, um, which was kind of an interesting situation. Now she's going to be playing the Big Ten, you know, which is which is interesting. It's a good situation, I think, for her. Of course, Clarkson, of course, you know, they got Erica Davenport, and then Stony Creek got Marie Zandi, Courtney Solick, and um, Carly Campbell, who I think is going to be very interesting over there. Of course, Clarkson, of course, with the emergence of freshman Molly Nicholson going to be over there as well. But the question is going to be guards play over there. And also you got Safia Lathrop as a team to keep an eye on, especially because you got the Bellow Twins there. I think that um, they played. And also, and also got Amber Williams over there. Um, very unique situation over there, Adam. When you look at girls basketball in the red, um, it's it's a tough situation. It's a tough division, I think. Um, when you look at it, um, I or my early favorite right now would be Harrison. Um, by the looks of it, because they return um three very good players and um Kristen Nelson, um Kyle Rowland, and um Megan Stevens. I think that's the one. Um, I think and Amber Stephens. Sorry, that's the one. Um, also the um and also I think Lathrop's a Good number two there. Adams is a three. I think Clarkson's four. North Farmington five. Stony Creek six. Now, it could change. I mean, the league is so balanced. I mean, like any team can be beat on any given day. When you look at the red this year, it's a brutal, brutal division. Um, when you look at that, it's it's my early projections or not my full projections. But when I look at when I look at the league, I think that Harrison, Harris, it could come down the final week what they did last last year when um. You had Harrison, you had Stony Creek, and you had um, you had Harrison. No, sorry, you had Harrison. You had um Clarkson, and you had Southfield Lathrop all battling for um, for that for the division title. And um, Harrison ended up winning out because they had to knock out Clarkson and knock the Southfield Lathrop to win the t- division title. You know, and unfortunately for them, for Harrison, they're in a very tough district because when you look at at the end of the year in March, I mean, they got to go to Birmingham Marion, and that is. And Birmingham Marion, of course, depending state champions, that's so going to be a tough district right over there from the get go. I mean, like you've got some very good teams over there at North Farming, at um, Birmingham Marion. Of course, this all starts with the Mustangs, and you got the Hawks, and then you got the Raiders in there, and then you got Seaholm is going to be good there, and also, but that's my thoughts for the Red right now. I think the early season favorite right now would be Harrison. Southfield late to probably be my next best. The dark horse I would probably say would be Adams. Keep an eye on Clarkston also. It's a tough league to figure out, but um, it would not surprise me this year that all of the um, OA Red goes above 500 this year. And, you know, you might have a losing league record, but it wouldn't surprise me if all six of those teams in the Red have over 500 records. I mean, the next division I'm going to mention, another division that's equally balanced. That's the OA White. Um, White, you got Oxford, Orion, Bloompy Hills, Troy, Avondale, West Bloompy This is a probably unique division because I think when you look at this division, um, it's unique. Um, a lot of teams have strengths. A lot of teams have weaknesses. I mean, when you look at the division last year, of course, it was won by Adams, but Oxford could stand, could be competitive in there. Orion could be competitive in there. West Bloompy could be competitive in there. Avondale also could be competitive in there. So can Troy and Bloompy Hills. I mean, like... I still think right now, when you look at the teams, right now one of the best division. I think the best team right now is Oxford because you got you got a very good five five sum over there. But the problem with them is they got no bench. Orion's going to rely on Orion's got a very interesting team. I think this is Orion's one of Orion's better teams that they've had since um 2010. Of course, um the year in 09 they went to the final the state final four. Um, but um when you look at Orion, I mean like you got some very good players coming up. Hannah Hame, Evan Wishmeyer. Those two players are going to be huge. The question for them is going to be interior, inside rebounding. I think it's going to be a huge factor, I think, when you look at Lake Orion this year. I mean, and then, of course, you got another team you got to look at. It's West Bloomfield, the Lakers. You know, Deja Jenkins, Rachel Harnish, um, I mean, like, and Taylor Pierce. Those are three very good players. You know, Dinkins and Pierce are your two fast speed girls who can go in and penetrate, whereas, um, Whereas Pierce, of course, is your interior threat, which will help out Matt Hilbers this year. Um, but the question is, what's West Wimpy's depth? You know what I mean? You don't know what their depth's going to have heading into the year. I mean, like, you know what Oxford's going to have when you look at those five, especially in Jessica Murphy and um, and Sherilyn Sh- Bandis, along with um, Grace Wasaki and um, 
it's Guy Donaldson. And, of course, you got the Bukowicz sisters. You know, those are the two players, I think, who are on their bench. You know, and then, of course, you got um, And then, of course, you got um, Samantha Mosecki, I think. Um, Chris, is he, yeah, Samantha Mosecki, I think. He's going to be a um, be a good player, I think, for Oxford, for Steve Emmer heading into the year. Um, but also, um, we look at back to um, – back to um, – we got um, – we got Avondale here, very interesting team for Darius Whiteside. Very good four, very talented team. They were beaten up last year in the red, you know, I mean, like by some very good teams. I expect Avondale to make some noise heading into the year. Um, and also you got Troy. Of course, Simon Bottle lost a lot of players last year. You, got, you lose Sidney Heath, Rachel Zemanski. You return Rachel Grecky and Alyssa Grecky. Questions can be the interior, you know what I mean? You're going to rely on them. How are you going to rely on so on Jordan Lafayette, um, who I think is an emerging um, emerging center? I think is going to be for um, Troy this season, and also you got um, and then of course you got Bloomfield Hill. Of course, I mean, of course you were replacing um, Shannon Wilson a year ago, and then you got um, you got Amanda Moss, Christina Prenna, um, you got um, Victory um, Victory Franklin. Um, yeah, it's, yep. Yeah, that's one. Um, I think that um, I think those girls are going to be make an impact for Jeff Rubin's team, and you got Jibley Jackson also in that team as well. Um, the question I have for Boompia Hills is the depth an issue. Also, um, they have an emerging freshman coming in. I know. Um, I've been hearing about that's very talented. Um, but like I said, it's going to be a very unique season. I think for Jeff Rubin, I think they could struggle. My early suggestion right now, I would rank. I would actually rank Oxford one, Orient two, um, West Bloomfield three, um, four would be um, four, four Avondale five, um, five Bloomfield Hill six Troy right now. That's the early, early, early projections right now. I can't guarantee um, my official projections. They'll be up on the Dragons Den blog. Next division we're going to mention, of course, is the um, OA Blue. This is a division where I think it's Seaholm. Than everybody else. When you look at the Maples, um, you know they got Mackenzie Harbot back. They got some other good players back, but everything starts with Mackenzie Harbot. You know she had a really bre- she had a breakout year last year. I think playing behind Elise Tobert, I think was a huge factor last year. Um, whereas teams could focus on them. Tobert, they're going to focus on her, and that leaves them. And that leaves um, Harbot open. And, of course, she penetrates. She can shoot the ball well. But she's not a good defender. You know what I mean? I noticed that, you know, looking at the films of um, Harbot. But when I look at the division there, I mean, like, you got Farmington, of course. They got a new coach, but they still got three very good players. And um, and um, got to remember the names. Um, of course, um, it'll come up. And Maya Douse, Amari Eccles, and um, Maddie Trevison. Those are the three players. Um, when you look at Farmington, those three guards are going to be very, very good. You know, looking at heading into the year, um, I think they're getting they're good. Farmington, they'll be keep Farmington in games. The problem is they got no size, or no bench, which is going to be a huge problem heading into the year. Um, and then the other, um, another team we're going to mention is Oak Park. The Knights, of course, Diane Jones is still there. She's one of the top coaches in the league. Um, I think that Oak Park's going to be a unique team to watch in this one. And of course, next team here is um. Is Rochester, as Royal Oak, the Ravens, you know, you got Brian Spada, of course, their coach there. You got um, Allison Karpinski's back. I think she's going to be a huge difference maker this year. They're known for their defense. I expect Royal Oak to be a very, very competitive team this year heading into the year. And then, of course, you got Gro- Groves, not very good last year. I don't expect them to be, they'll be, a, they'll be, they'll be our, I mean, they'll probably struggle this year. And then, of course, you got Rochester, of course. The Falcons are going to have Zoe Schultz. If they get the Avery Jackson back, I think they're going to be a better team for Adam Sheldon. But um, but and also you got um, but Rochester, very unique team to watch heading into the year. I mean, like my early blue, early early projections would be um, one would be Seaholm, two Farmington, three Oak Park, four Royal Oak, five Rochester, six Groves. In the last division we're going to mention before we go on break is um the gold um. That division basically is a two-division race, I expect, between Troy, Athens, and Berkeley. The Red Hawks, of course, um, very, they're a big school. Don't understand why they're in the gold still, but, you know, they're still they're going to be a good team to watch, I think. And then you got Berkeley, of course. they got a lot of experience back. Um, the Bears are a unique team to look at heading into the year. Um, 
when looking at Berkeley, the Bears are the Bears could be a very interesting matchup to look at team to look at, you know. And I think that Berkeley could do some damage this season. Uh, my third best team would be Ferndale, of course. I'm gone is Michaela Ellis, and that bunch. I think Ferndale could struggle a little bit he- heading into the year. Um, and then um, and then you look at um other teams around the area. You got um, Hazel Park, who I think is going to struggle again. And then um. You got Southfield, who's known for their speed, and also you got um, and then of course you also got um, got to take a look at who the other teams are in the OA. Um, yep. So um, right now my early projections I got um, one is Troy Athens, two Berkeley, three Ferndale, four would be Southfield, five would be five would be um. Let me take a look here. Um, it's kind of hard, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, fives. Oh, yeah, Pontiac's also in this division. Also forgot to mention them, of course. Um, it'll be another tough year, I think, for Lance Davis and his crew over there. Um, it's an unfortunate situation over there um, when you look at it. And then, of course, the, um, right now I would have Pontiac probably in the bottom of the bottom cellar. You know, it was a tough year for Pontiac to move down. And then... Um, Got Troy Athens one, Berkeley two, Ferndale three, Southfield four, Hazel Park five, Pontiac is six. Those that is my projections for the um, early season projection. Not my official projections yet for the OA um, Gold Division, but it'll be a unique division, I think, when you look at heading into the um, season. You know, open um, tryouts course once again starting today, and um, also um, they're gonna last probably, and then um, every team will be. We'll have scrimmages. They'll probably get some practice time, get some chemistry together, and then before each team kicks off in their first games pr- around December 4th slash December 5th, um, of course, um, we'll keep an eye on some of these games heading into the year. On um, OA now, we'll mention some of the big games, of course, around the area heading into the year, also not only for girls' season but also for boys' season as well. All right, now when we come back, we're going to mention, of course, we're going we're gonna to go over some Bible. Of course, and of course, some big from big topics. Of course, what happened to Lake Orion against Clarkston, um, and also what happened against for Troy Athens against Troy here on OA Now. We want a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a Habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for Habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to Only Now. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger of the Dragon's Den, and one of the hosts of Between Terminus here on ON TV. Um, of course, we'd like to thank ON TV for giving the opportunity to produce Away Now. Um, also, um, you can also check out the latest projections on the Dragon's Den blog at Saginaw Bay at blogspot.com. And of course, um, a lot of unique matches here. We're going to go with Vival first. Um, a lot of recapping here around this, um, around here. Of course, right now, you got, um, Three OA te- four OA teams left. You got Clarkson, Troy, C. Home and Groves. Of course, when I first we're going to mention, of course, is the, the Lake Orion District. That was the district that I covered. It was a shocker over in the district final at Clarkston um, at Lake Orion, no doubt. I mean, like um, when I look at the first game, Stony Creek beating Adams. That to me, it was a surprise that Adams went four games with them. With Stony Creek, I mean Stony Creek, I thought was a better team, but Adams played very well in that matchup. But yet they fatigued down the stretch, and um, it was kind of like an odd thing about their season. You know, I was kind of surprised what Eric Gardner said about about his team. They need to find players, which I don't buy that statement at all. I mean, he's got the pieces there. I think that um, you know, but he's got the pieces there. I mean, like, but um, but they got it, but um. They'll get better, you know what I mean? Eric Gardner's one of the best coaches in the state. Um, and, of course, for Stony Creek, that was a um, huge win at the time for them on that Monday. 
And also, um, Lake Orion sweeping Rochester. Rochester looked completely outmatched in that one by the Dragons. Um, I just thought that the size mismatch was a difference maker in that one. I just thought Lake Orion was too much for um, Rochester on that Monday. And then on that Wednesday, you look at um, then on that Wednesday you got um, Stony Creek and Clarkson. I thought this match was going to go five. You know what I mean? But you know, Clarkson ended up being the aggressor against Stony Creek. I mean, if that would have went five games, I would have Stony Creek would have won that game over Clarkston. But Clarkson ended up winning that game over Stony Creek in four games. And Lake Warren, of course, beat Oxford. Oxford did not look like they didn't want to be there on that on that in that match and that game. They didn't want to meet. They didn't want to see Lake Warren. I don't know why. I mean, you know, but it was an unfortunate situation for Coach Christy McDevitt and her team. I mean, that match in the district final. I could not believe it. I'm still in shock over it. What in the blue blades happened to Lake Orion against Clarkson? Clarkson just completely dominated Orion. I mean, it was just mind-boggling to see. I mean, Orion made, and Orion really didn't play that bad. I mean, like, they made mistake after mistake after mistake in that game. I mean, like, everything was falling down for Clarkson. Taylor Dillinger had a big night, and also, um, for Clarkson, I think that once she got going, it was going to be a long night for um, Orion. I just thought that the defense failed him. You know, I just got to give credit to Clarkson's defense. I mean, Clarkson just just completely beat Orion, took the crowd out of the game. It neutralized the crowd. It was mind-boggling to see what happened in that game. I mean, like when I'm um, with in that one. Now, the question I ask is, what in the Blue Bays happened here? I mean, like what Lake Orion. I mean. I, did they show up not to? They showed. I mean, they show up not to play. They didn't show up. I mean, they basically didn't show up ready to play. I mean, like, don't give me excuses. Team's young. This is a team that was ranked fourth in the state, and you let the fifth ranked team in the state and your arch rival just go in there and just dominate you the way they did. And it's unfortunate, you know what I mean, to see that one team is out of the playoffs. I thought expected that this game would go five. That this set would go five. Unfortunately, it didn't go five, and you know, and that was a shocker, especially to see what happened in that game, especially what happened in those three games. You know, the second game was completely shocking to me. Twenty-five eleven? Are you kidding me? In third game was twenty-five fourteen? Are you? I mean, the game really looked like Lake Orion really was never in in all three of those games. I mean, that's something that um was shocking and uh, shocking. I mean, I don't know if Clarks, I mean, like if Clarks might have played their best volleyball that night or Lake Ori might have picked a bad night to play their worst volleyball. And it's unfortunate when you look at this team. This is a good team. This is a state championship quality team here. I mean, like, and unfortunate for them, they, unfortunate for the Dragons, it's a, it's a tough way to end the season. And now Clarkson gets to move on to play Troy. Troy, of course, another team that shocked me. I mean, like, I didn't expect Troy to win to win their district, even though they were at home. I mean, but to beat Avondale and Troy Athens, the two teams I thought personally who were favored in that turn in that side of the draw, because Troy Athens, they were a team that beat Troy earlier in the year. I mean, they beat them earlier in the year at their place, and and then the see them, um, and then but the shocker to me was in the semifinals when Troy swept Avondale three games. I could not believe it. I mean, it was shocking to basically see what happened to um tr to Avondale. Avondale, very experienced team, very proud team, and and it's, it's an unfortunate situation to see what happened to that team, to that Avondale team who just got completely destroyed. They just got whooped. They got killed by Troy, and and of course, this is a team in Troy. You got, you got um. You got Vince Muscat, of course, um, in his team. You know they had a rough red this year. They had a really tough year in the red this year. But they have taken some teams to four games. They took Lake Orion to four games. They took Clarkson to four games. I mean, you know, so you know with Troy, you can't count them out. I think their year is next year. You know, when you look at Troy, I mean, because their JB team that they had over there was not bad at all. But I'm still in shock with Troy winning their district at home. I mean, like I didn't expect Troy. To basically go out there and win their district, I thought it was going to be Troy Athens or Avondale, but um, but it was it was a shocker to see that um that Troy ended up winning that district district thirty over there at um at Troy. 
Uh, Groves was an interesting team, I thought, with them. You know, they were living on the moment a couple times, I thought, in their district tournament. Um, of course, they beat Royal Oak in five on Monday. Of course, Royal Oak was my pick to win the um, district. And then, of course, they beat Berkeley. They beat Oak Park in them um, four. And then, of course, they knocked off them. Um, Berkeley and five. I mean, like, um, Royal Oak is a team, I think. You know, Royal Oak, a lot of people said they were a disappointing team. I mean, like, but they showed to play their best in the um, last games of the year. I mean, like, um, I mean, I thought that they, I mean, like, and it was surprised to see that they were, they said that Royal Oak was so disorganized. It was a shocker to me because in the last year, Royal Oak was a very good volleyball team. And, and of course, with Groves, it's a huge win for Groves. It stops the bleeding after what happened the last two weeks of the year when Groves struggled down the stretch. And now um, for Groves, it's basically, okay, you know what I mean? You won your home district. Now you're going to be going to a neutral site, and you're playing your arch rival. You know, But for Groves in this district, it's a huge, huge win for them. It gives them a chance. It, it repeats their championship when you look at that matchup, I mean, when you look at them, they repeat their championship. They beat, I think, Royal Oak and Berkeley were two of were the top, were two top competitors. I was surprised that the game with Oak Park went four games because um, when I look at the Knights, I mean, they had some athletes, athletes on their team as well. I mean, like, um, but they're a very young team as well. Um, and then the last one here, I'm surprised was C. Was actually another one I was surprised was, and I don't mention it here in my um, notes here is West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, this was a team that went to the district final and lost to um, Lakeland in three games. I mean, like, they shocked Ball Lake Central. I was very surprised that they did that right there. And um, with West Bloomfield, I mean, like, I thought personally, I thought they weren't going to beat Lakeland. I thought they were, I knew they, I don't think, I think they were going to beat Lakeland. I also didn't think they were going to beat Wall Lake Central. And they ended up going out there and beating Wall Lake Central. Huge, huge um, success for West Bloomfield, I think. Successful season for the Lakers. You know, unfortunate for them that they lost the White Lake Lakeland in the district final over there. But you got to give that crew over there down there at West Bloomby a lot of credit. They played in a very tough schedule course. You know, it's never an easy thing to play in the White. But also, to beat a Kensington Lake, some North opponent, that's huge for your confidence right there. And then, of course, um, the last district we're going to talk before we go in the regional previews is um, Birmingham Seahome. Of course, they won at Birmingham Marion. Um, when I look at the Maples, you know, that they're run, they, they went through, they had a very easy two rounds. Um, now they beat Harrison pretty handily. I mean, like that was a, um, wasn't surprised there, but Birmingham Marion, of course, beat North Farmington and, um, beat North Farmington and Bloompia Hills also. And then, um, to beat the play Seaholme and, um, it was very similar. I thought to the 2011 game between Lake Orion and Birmingham Marion, of course, um, Mustang fans remember that one. Of course, Birmingham Marion won game one. And then, of course, Birmingham Seaholm then took the next three, especially turned around in game two. And also, to close it out, that was one of the most craziest games. You're down 24-19. You come all the way back, win 28-26. And then a few minutes later, the Maple Force goes down to the court and storms the court and celebrates like crazy. I mean, it's a huge, huge win for um, Heather Lippert and her Maples. Um, I said before the year, I said Birmingham Seahome was going to be one of the favorites in that district. Man, was I right. You know what I mean? I said Birmingham Seahome. I ranked Birmingham Seahome early in the year, ranked number one in the Dragons in the pool for volleyball. And there's a reason why I thought when you look at the Maples, this is a very experienced team, very talented team that they got. I mean, like um, Ann, Ann Scheffler, Lauren McLeod, her and, the, and crew, the, that's a team that, that is going to give some people fit heading into the um, – Heading in there, and of course, um, and they and they did that, especially in the district tournament, and of course, beating Birmingham Marion, you know, and going back to Birmingham Marion for the regional, that was stunning, you know, to say the least. I mean, like, I still don't understand how Birmingham Marion ends up getting a district and a regional at the same time. I mean, like, I didn't think that was right at all when they um, when the MHA went out and did the the um district and regional pairings um when you look at that side of the draw anyway Seahome really I thought Seahome really prepared well for Birmingham Marion I mean like the I mean like and that's something you got to give props to Heather Lippert and her crew for doing that they've done a nice job in building that team up getting them ready for the um getting them ready for the playoff run of course I think playing in the red 
playing teams like Clarkston, Orion, Stony Creek. They prepared, I think that prepared Seaholm to do what they did to Birmingham Marion. Of course, and let's not forget, Birmingham Marion won the Catholic League this year. And that was something. You know, when you beat the Catholic League champions on your home court, that is stunning to do. And and Birmingham Seaholm did that. You know, they've had success over there, Birmingham Marion. But to go out there and beat Birmingham Marion on their home court, that is pretty impressive for the Maples to go out there and win that one. Now we're going to go mention here the next. We're going to talk about the regional previews. Of course, we're covering two regionals here on the Den here. We got the regional at Birmingham Marion, of course, Birmingham Seaholm, Birmingham Groves. The other side, the other matchup is Livonia Churchill versus Farmington North Mercy. A lot of people are expecting Birmingham Seaholm to play Farmington North Mercy. Of course, Farmington North Mercy is one of the um, top teams in the Catholic League. Of course, they lost to Birmingham Marion. Here is Seaholm here. Um, I think Seaholm beats Groves in three games. I think Mercy beats Savonia Churchill in three games. Then it sets up Birmingham Seaholm versus Farmington Hills Mercy, in which that's going to be a really, really, really good matchup. You know, when I look at that match for the regional title, it's a good matchup for um, Seaholm. It's a good match for Mercy that they're going to go against each other, more likely going to go against each other. If one of these teams gets shocked, I'll be stunned. You know, but eventually, but I think right now you're looking at a collision course between Birmingham Seaholm and Farmington North Mercy, with the winner, with the winner of that going to the quarterfinals, and then of course that winner will likely go to Battle Creek. And um, you know, in that matchup, I look at when I preview that matchup between Seaholm and Mercy, it's a it's a tough matchup for Seaholm, especially. Um, but they got a lot of experience. But this is Farmington North Mercy here. You know, I mean, when I look at the games, it wouldn't surprise me if this goes five games. I mean, like, but in this one here, I'm going to take Seaholm to win in five games over Mercy because when I look at it here, I think they got a lot of experience, a lot of talent. Mercy's a hell of a team. They're a good, good volleyball team. And I think right now, I think Seaholm's got the more experience on their side. I think they got the more, um, more, um, I think the key is experience and I also think the key is the Maple Forest. If the Maple Forest comes out in full thrones like they did at the district final, I think that Seaholm's going to win that district, and it could be a really, really interesting ride for Birmingham Marion. And the next district here for um, long ride for um, Farmington Hills Mercy. The next district here is at regionals at Troy Athens. Of course, you got Romeo versus Anchor Bay, and then you got Clarkson versus Troy. If Clarkson doesn't beat Troy, I mean, like, I'll be stunned. I mean, like, Clarkson, I don't know if they played. They might have played their best volleyball game of the year against Lake Orion. Um... When you look at the Wolves, Taylor Dillinger, you know, they she's had a heck of a playoff. I mean, like, right now, I mean, like, there should be no reason why I think Dillinger's going to go off against Troy. Um, Troy's had a heck of a, heck of a season. They've had a nice year, but I just think it ends against Clarkston, you know, this week. And then, of course, got Romeo and Anchor Bay. Um, when you look at Romeo, um, the Bulldogs, Gia Manila and her crew, I mean, like, Romeo's a good team. I think, you know, I think they're going to be Anchor Bay in three games um, when looking at it here. And then, of course, um, that sets up a match between Clarkson and Romeo. Um, when I look at Clarkson and Romeo, of course, it's a good matchup, I think, for both teams um, going against each other. But, you know, when I look at Gia Manila, of course, she's a junior, going to go to Maryland next year. Uh, going to Maryland, of course, in two years. I think it's a huge, interesting opportunity there for um, Kelly Avril Pinner and her Wolves. I like Clarkson to win that region at Troy Athens and move on to play Birmingham Seaholm. I think it'll be a good matchup in that quarter and then on state quarterfinal. But if they play Mercy, it won't surprise me. I like Clarkson to win the Troy Athens regional. I like Seaholm to win the region at Birmingham Marion. That districts are not going to be easy, easy at all in that situation. And my final thoughts, of course, I'm on volleyball. Um, just still in shock about Lake Orion losing in three games to Clarkson. That was just that was just a shocker. Coming, that was a mind-boggling shocker, no doubt about it. When you look at that side of the district, all right. Now, when we come back here on OA, now we're going to talk some football. We got picks, we got projections, and of course, recapping the the um, games from last week here on OA. Now.
Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to Only Now. I'm Sammy Timmy, blogger of the Dragon's Den. and one of the hosts of Between Tier Minutes here on Owen TV. Um, like to spend special heart and love and condolences to um, the Penny family from North Farmington and also the Lloyd family from Pontiac. Of course, um, both suffering, tra- both families suffering tragic losses during the um, months. Um, it's unfortunate. We um, here at Only Now like to send our special condolences to the families of both the Lloyds and the Pennies. Um, now we go to football here. Um, of course, you know, this is a very unique weekend. Of course, regional weekend. Um, but first, we've got to recap the districts, um, especially um, when you look at Division One. I, I mean, like, um, one of the biggest upsets probably occurred over at West Bloomfield. You know, the Lakers, you know, they had a very good team. They end up losing 11-7 to to Wall Lake Central. Of course, Wall Lake, of course, that game, of course, reminded me of the game in 2011 with the Dragons taking on the um, – Vikings in that playoff game in which um, Wall Lake Central took advantage of a lot of Lake Orion mistakes. It tur- Lake Orion turned the ball over at least four times in that game. Um, Wall Lake Central actually, of course, they turn- made West Bloom to turn the ball over five times in that one. It was shocking to see in that one. I mean, like, it was shocking to see a dynamic offense like West Bloomfield to give up at least to, to basically turn the ball over a lot in that matchup. And basically, for Wall Lake Central to give them their credit, they played well defensively in that game. I mean, there was no doubt that the Lakers played well defensively. They shut down Tristan Jackson, shut down Michael King, and that's hard to do, you know. What I mean, and you and shut down Eddie Wilson, one of the best linemen in the um in the OA, and to basically shut down that Laker offense, of course, who put up forty one against Clarkston, forty two against Orion. 42, 42 against 49 against Oxford, and to just uh, 42 sorry against Oxford, and basically just shut down and shut down that West Bloomfield offense who was killing people. My God, I mean to do it at their place, and um, a lot of people are looking at West Bloomfield as a dark horse team in Division One, and to see Wall Lake Central, of course, they finished second in the um, Kensington. Behind uh, and the KLI North behind, um, got to figure out who won the who won the thing. Um, behind Wild Lake Western, of course, Wild Lake Western was knocked out by Harrison this week. Um, but we'll go over that in a minute. But it was shocking to see that West Bloomfield just go in there. I mean, like Wild Lake Central will go in there and just basically beat West Bloomfield at their own game. You know, they virtually made it a defensive ugly slugfest and. And West Bloomfield, unfortunately, is out of the playoffs because of the fact that they committed five turnovers. And it's a day and shame for the Lakers because they had a heck of a season. They made the playoffs for the first time since 2008. This is the fr- I mean, like, they had home games for the first time in a long while. I mean, like, you got to give credit to Ronald Bellamy and his troops for having a heck of a season. They've had a really good year. I mean, like, and... um. They'll be back, you know. What I, mean? I think West Bloomfield will be right. Will be back next year, you know. I expect them to be a very, very good team. And let's not forget the schedule next year for West Bloomfield is very, very friendly because you got Lake Orion, Oxford, Clarkston, Stony Creek all coming to West Bloomfield, and of course you got the um, crossover also coming to West Bloomfield. So I expect the Lakers to be very, very good next year and also got Trishan Jackson coming back as your starting quarterback. That's a good that's a good thing problem to have for next year. Next match we're gonna recap of course is in division two. Groves was no match for very young brother rice was forty nine to seven unfortunately. Um it was Groves looked oh, oh outmatched by the Warriors. I mean like Alex Malzone had a really nice game again. Um Groves they gave everything they could in that one but unfortunately for Groves it's been a it was a tough, tough match for the Falcons. Groves had a really nice season in the blue. Um, they, I mean, like, um, it wouldn't surprise me next year 
that Groves and Farmington, those are the two teams that get moved up to the white next year when looking at that looking at the league next year. Um when they looking at the leagues next year. Um next game we're gonna mention here Southfield 14, Oak Park 13. It's a huge win for Southfield. The Blue Jays, of course, um scoring a touchdown late against the Knights. Oak Park's, you know, Oak Park, you know, this is the they've lost to Southfield again. This is the second time they lost them. The first game they lost was 2016. I mean, like, um, that was a stunner right there. Oak Park finishes the year at um at eight and three. Um, it was an unfortunate. Two of those losses was Southfield. The other two, the other one was the Detroit Cast Tech. Detroit Cast Tech still playing. They're in the Division One regional final. They're playing Chippewa Valley, who some for some reason went and beat Dakota, 28-27. I mean, that's the first time they beat him in 16 straight tries. My God, I mean, like, what has this world gotten itself into here? You know, you got Chippewa Valley beating um, Dakota. You got um, Wall Lake Central knocking off West Bloomfield. My goodness gracious. I mean, like, but a huge win for the Blue Jays and Gary Teasley, especially now um, with, um, with the, um, with their, with the um, game at Wyandotte Roosevelt looming for the Blue Jays. For Greg Carter, it's been a, it was a good year with this crew. You know what I mean? It's four-year... Um, this, this 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 was virtually his his kids over here at Oak Park. This was his kids. They had a heck of a season. You got to give props to Greg Carden and his staff, you know, for what they did, and also the kids. You know, what I mean, they are the ones that brought those kids back into the promised lands, and also those kids are going to have a future. You know, those kids are going to have a heck have a heck of a future next year, especially those who are going to go to major Division One schools. I think John Kelly's going major D one. I think Junior McMillan's going D one. You know, I think that Oak Park's gonna be in a is in a really, really good place right now for um under Greg Carter, you know what I mean? In that division one level. And um of course the next game next team we're gonna mention here, of course, is um is Clarkston, of course. Clarkston surviving Lapier twenty three twenty. Um it was a game that was much closer than people thought. Um when you look at Clarkston, I mean like um they had to Basically, they were only up 14, 13 at halftime, you know, and they had to, they had to take advantage of some um, Lapeer mistakes late. I mean, like, I thought Lapeer should have beat Clarkson, but Lapeer um, ended up, um, they they struggled in that matchup with Clarkson. Um, but um, for Clark, for Lapeer, it was their first loss as a school, as a one Lapeer. And then for Clarkson, it was a huge win for him because, you keep that dream season alive, and then of course that regional now might have got a little easier, but you can't count out East Kentwood or um, Hudsonville. Of course, Hudsonville went and destroyed Rockford, thirty fifteen at Rockford, which was a, which I thought was a surprise a little bit. But when I look at Rockford, the last two seasons they've been struggling a little bit in that matchup, and then of course the last team here we're gonna mention here before we go to the um, regional projections and previews is. Farmingdale's Harrison, of course. Harrison played Wild Lake Western at Wild Lake it was without Javon Shaw, who's out for the year with an ACL. And um, they went and beat, won in overtime, 10-9. It was because of Harrison's defense. Harrison has a legit defense when you look at the Hawks. I mean, like, they got they got a couple good guys there. It's a very good lineup that Harrison's got. A huge win for John Harrington, especially because when you look at that game, Harrison had to had basically force the Wall Lake Western kicker to miss his PAT attempt. And Harrison, all they had to do was win with the PAT. And he got it. You know, he ended up getting the PAT done with. And um, the reason why Harrison's moving on is because of their defense. And for Harrison, the, the reward for them after playing Fenton and playing Wall Lake Western, you get a home game with Flushing. I mean, you get to play Flushing on your home field in the regional final. That's a huge game for Harrison now. I mean, like, you earned your opportunity to play in the regional, and you got a good chance to play Muskegon Mona Shores. That's a good opportunity right there. I mean, for Harrison. And they're going to probably, they're going to likely get, I think they're going to get that opportunity in that matchup here. But um, we're going to go over all three matchups here shortly here for the district playoffs, um, for the regional playoffs. First matchup gonna be out of Division One. You got Clarkson, Wild Lake Central. Wild Lake Central, of course, Nate Crum, um, very good quarterback. I mean, like Clarkson's gonna have to deal with them. Of course, Clarkson's had, Wild Lake Central's had success at Clarkston. They knocked off the Wolves um, a couple times in the past. I think um, 
course, 2011 was one of them. They knocked him out in the district semi in the district final. Um, I don't think Kurt Richardson and his Wolves have not forgotten about that matchup. Um, but this is a different Clarkson team when you look at the Wolves. Um, Clarkson is a um, they're a team I think that's going to give them Wild Lake Western Central's defense a lot of problems. They're going to give them a lot of fits. Wild Lake Central's got a not a bad defense either. I think the key for Wild Lake Central against Clarkson's time possession if they if they basically slow the clock, eat up clock, and basically run that triple option offense like they do, I think Wild Lake Central has a shot to get out of Clarkson with a win. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen, but I think this game's going to be much closer than people think. When you look at Wild Lake Central, I mean, you look at the Vikings, you know, this team, if they can win with ugly defense, and I mean, defense wins your championships. No doubt about it. You know, Clarkson's got one of the top offenses the OA. I mean, one of the top offenses in the state. Of course, they shut down West Bloomfield's high-octane offense. Of course, they were averaging about 40 points a game, and yet here's Clarkson coming in averaging 45 a game, and they could do the same thing to Clarkson. This is a trap game, a scary game for Clarkson. Clarkson better be careful not look ahead to either Hudsonville or East Kentwood, but I just think right now with the way Clarkson's playing, you know, it's going to be a close game. This will be a really close game. I think Clarkson pulls this game out, I think, by 10 points in this one. I think that Clarkson's going to basically, it's going to be close, and it'll be an interesting game. I like Clarkson in that matchup over Wall Lake Central. Next match we're going to mention here is um, at Harrison. you got Flushing and Harrison, the Raiders. Unique team here, no doubt Flushing. Um, they got some athletes there, but I don't think they have the athletes basically what the extent that Harrison has. Harrison, even though they're without Javon Shaw, is out for the year. It's it, it was a tough situation for, anyway right there, but I think it's a bad, bad matchup for Flushing. You're likely also going to be playing on a Saturday afternoon over there at Harrison in Farmington Hills. Um, Harrison, of course, a lot of tradition on their side. They got one of the best coaches in the state and John Harrington on their side. I think Harrison goes in there smash, and beats Flushing. I think they smash the Raiders in this matchup. And, of course, the last um, regional matchup here we're going to mention today is going to be um, it's Southfield at Wyandotte Roosevelt. Of course, Wyandotte Roosevelt, remember two years ago they knocked out Oak Park from the playoffs. But this is a different animal. I mean, I know Wyandotte Roosevelt has a very good wide receiver. And the Bears have a very good wide receiver. Um, but Southfield's got a very deep secondary. And this secondary is just absolutely filthy. When you look at Southfield, when you look at the Blue Jays, I mean, like, this is a team, they've been known for winning games on the road. These, this team is road warriors. When you look at Southfield, the Blue Jays, this is a good good test, I think, for for Southfield in their corners, especially against Wyandotte Roosevelt. Of course, um, when I look at this game here with Southfield and Wyandotte Roosevelt, I mean, Southfield, of course, they've won games ugly. You know, they, they I mean, their best game, I thought, offensively, was when they blew out Detroit Martin Luther King. And then, of course, they had to survive Oak Park. And then, of course... Here's Wyandotte Roosevelt. Here, I mean, like the um, I think Southfield will win this game. I think they'll win it by double digits. You know, I mean, when I look at the Blue Jays, um, this team offensively is one of the most. They can be one of the most scariest teams. I think Southfield's the dark horse in Division Two. I think that Southfield could give Birmingham Brother Rice everything it could handle. You know, when I look at that matchup, especially they're going to test Alex Malzone what he's going to do. I think, I mean, like, I'm going to put it to you right now. I'll put it to you guys right now. I think Southfield beats Birmingham Brother Rice in, dish, in, re, in the district, in the state CLS. I think that they beat him. I think Southfield goes to state finals. I'm just not sold on Birmingham Brother Rice. As, um, even though they got a lot of good athletes on that team, I just think Southfield, with that secondary, with that, with what they've got, you know what I mean? I just think Southfield is going to be, I mean, like, it wouldn't, I think Southfield goes to state finals for the first time ever. And, of course, with Harrison against Muskegon on the shores, of course, it's a tough matchup for Harrison because you don't have um, Javon Shaw in that matchup if they do play Muskegon on the shores. Um, but, um, but still, I mean, it would have been a heck of a crazy year for Harrison. And, of course, a lot of people in Division One are probably going to look at a possible Clarkson-Detroit-Cast-Tech state final. In that matchup, you know, if if... If that were to happen, I like Clarkson in that matchup because, um, one, Clarkson's got a passing game. 
I mean, like, even, and two, I don't think Detroit Cast Tex has, a, Detroit Cast Tex running games very, very deadly. You got Mike Weaver, one of the best running backs in the state. I mean, like, and then, of course, going up against Clarkson's defense. Clarkson's defense is not the greatest, but their offense is taking care of the offensive issues. You know what I mean? Their lack of issues. But, unfortunately, I think when you look at Clarkson, you know, they're probably going to be riding, they're going to be riding their offense to the state playoffs. They're riding their offense in the state playoffs right now. Um, I think when you look at the Wolves, it's it's basically this. It's, it's Clarkston. Um, this may be one of the best eras right now. And unfortunately, the whole league right now is in an era of Clarkston right now. And that's a, and that's a tough situation for, an, for a Dragon fan, you know what I mean? To notice that we're right now in an era of Clarkston right now in the OAA right now as we speak. So my picks for football regionals this week, I like Southfield over Detroit. I like Southfield over Wyandotte Roosevelt. I like Fl- I like Harrison over Flushing. And I like Clarkston over Wild Lake Central. And of course in the Viable Regionals, I like Clarkston over Troy. Romeo over Anchor Bay. I like Clarkston to win that regional over Romeo. And then the regional at Marion, I like um I like Seaholm over Groves. I like I like Mercy over Churchill. And I like Seaholm over Mercy in the regional final over there at over there at um, Birmingham Marion. Of course, um, like to thank I like to thank everybody here at ON TV for letting me do the show here tonight. Um, hearts and prayers are to the um, Penny and um, Lloyd families. Of course, um, the Penny family are at North Farmington, and of course the um, Lloyd family at Pontiac. Um, hearts and condolences go to the families of each of the each family suffering a tough tragedy tragic loss and um. In each of the cases, um, all right, everybody, um, enjoy, enjoy yourselves, everybody, and um, and um, good night, everybody, and God bless all. OAA Now is produced at Orion Neighborhood Television, Lake Orion's community media outlet. To learn more about ON TV, visit our website at www.orionontv.org or call us at 248-393-1060.